All right, what we're going to go over now, you hopefully already went ahead and looked at the balloon model life cycle stars. You read the little introduction and you looked at all the uh, materials that you're going to need. I just want to give you a quick demonstration. This is a really fun activity for the students to get them up, moving around. Uh, really like for this to be done after you've kind of went over the HR diagram and you've done the life cycle of stars project. Uh, this is a great kind of ending type uh, activity. So the very beginning of this activity, uh, you have student volunteers doing all this, but I'm going to demonstrate it for you. Uh, but the very beginning, you talk about how a star begins as a nebula and you'd have a student and they would throw up the confetti, which would represent the dust and gas that is out in space and how it's expanding, but then eventually starts to contract because of the force of gravity. And eventually, and that when it contracts, it becomes hotter and hotter in the center until nuclear fusion starts to take place. Once nuclear fusion starts to take place, you have your next set of students, which you would need at least four students. Now, you would have four different balloons here. You'd have this red balloon, orange, yellow, and blue. Now, what I want you to notice is that they're all different sizes, and there's a reason for that. Um, I would recommend maybe having your shortest student have this one, which is the red, which would be kind of the smallest type of star, and it's also the coolest type of star. And this is an opportunity for you to say the smallest stars a lot of times are the coolest stars, and they live the longest because they are so small and they don't burn through. And so you'd have a student showing this off. Then you have your next type of stars, which would be kind of your average or medium-sized stars, um, which would be orange, which would be the net, next warmest color that you can have, or the yellow, which would be our sun, which is an average size star, which live kind of an average length of time um, in the lifespan of a star. And then your last one, which is kind of your large star, which is the hottest star, which is a blue star. Um, this is a great demonstration right here because they can see all the different temperatures of stars from coolest to hottest, but they can also see the size and you can talk about the lifespan of a star as well. And you know, you could have one hold it low and the blue be held high and you could reference back to the HR diagram and how it kind of forms that with the sun being kind of that center point in the middle. Um, so once you kind of demonstrate that, you talk about how a star is contracting from gravity and then also giving off pressure because of the nuclear fusion. And as that's happening, there is still a little bit of confetti or dust and material that's being shot out during that process. But eventually nuclear fusion stops that outward force and only the inward force starts to take place of gravity. And it shrinks smaller and smaller until eventually the helium begins to infuse into even heavier elements. And that's where you get your next student who is actually going to show a red giant where it's expanding out from the helium. And notice how the students will see this is much larger than the other students who are up there holding the other four stars. And now they're saying, okay, the star is expanding, it's getting bigger. So this would be your red giant, your super giant. And eventually this will dissipate and go away and all that will be left is your white dwarf it's if it's on a small which is represented by this yogurt raisin and then you depending on who you are as a teacher you could put it in your mouth and you could suck on it and you could just explain that over the years that leftover energy will eventually go away no longer be there and then it turns into a black dwarf and you could pull the raisin back out. Some of you may not want to do that. Just use the regular raisin to show that. Now, your largest stars, which is this is going to be that student that loves this the most. You have the large one. These are your super blue giant stars that are up at the top left of the HR diagram that they're super hot. They're super large. They don't live very long and they go through this whole process of doing that and you have your student with this star and when they run out of their hydrogen instead of going through a shrinking and going they actually explode as a supernova and if you get some confetti in there it makes a great demonstration like you just saw and after that explosion it eventually contracts back in becoming one of two things either a neutron star which is even smaller than the white dwarf 
or it becomes a black hole, which as we know, um, students always love learning about. Um, but this is a great activity for a few different reasons. One, it allows the students to get up, move around. Uh, so some of those Marzano strategies of chunking content. This would be a great activity where you can kind of take the reader's theater kind of script where the students read about each of the stars and they read it and you cut them into strips and maybe the students have to put it in the correct order in a certain time period and you have that done in groups. Um, so you're organizing the interact, you're chunking the content, but this is a great lab really to visualize the life cycle of a star, especially at the end after they've already learned about all the different phases. So don't be afraid to try this one. I think it, you would really enjoy it and your students would as well.